Now Dijkstra's algorithm finds you the shortest path from one point to another point in a network. Let's say we wanted to find the shortest path from S to T. Now we would be able to do that by I. We wouldn't even need to use Dijkstra's algorithm. And we can see that the shortest path would be S, B, A, T. Now in doing that, I have used the edges S, B, B, A and A, T. So they have been used, so reminding ourselves from the previous video where we introduced indicator variables, they would be ones, okay, because I'm using those. So I would have one lot of one plus two lots of one plus five lots of one, and that would be my minimum value. Whereas the other edges, S, A and B, T, weren't used. So I would have plus eight lots of zero plus seven lots of zero. Okay, so if they're not used, they get value zero. If they are used, they get value one. Now, I could uh, use Dijkstra's algorithm to do this, uh, but I'm not going to do that. The whole point of this exercise is being able to write this out, finding the shortest path as a linear programming problem that I could then type in to a program like Lindo, and it would be able to solve the problem for me. Okay, that's what this part is all about. So, I want to find the shortest path, so I want to minimise the total length of the network. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out each of the possible edges that I could use and multiply that by their weight. So I'm going to have eight lots of SA, for example. Now SA is a variable that could either be one or zero. It's an indicator variable. So you're either going to get eight times one or eight times zero. That's what that means. Or I could have one lot of SB. Or I could have two lots of AB. But I could also go from, instead of going from A to B, I could go from B to A. And because there are two possible routes there, I must include them both in my objective function. Now you might be going, well, why am I not including A to S then? Well, the reason why I wouldn't include A to S is I'm starting at S. So there's no way that I would ever want to go back from A to S. Okay, there'd be no point. So I wouldn't include it. But I could uh, use either AB or BA. Now, I've also got five lots of AT and seven lots of BT. So thinking back to what I know the shortest path is, SB, BA, AT, that would be eight lots of zero plus one, one lot of one, plus two lots, well, I'm not using A, B, am I? That'd be two lots of zero. I am using uh, B, A, though. Okay, so that's uh, two lots of one. And I've got five lots of one, because I'm using A, T, but I'm not using B, T. So I would have 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 0, which is the 8. Okay, so this is what my objective function needs to be. Now what about the constraints? Well, sorry, subject to. Okay, so what about my constraints? Well, because I'm starting at S, there are only two choices I can make. Either I go from S to A, or I go from S to B. Okay, there are only two choices out of S. So I want a constraint for each of the vertices. And I start with S, and there's only two routes out I could use, either SA or SB. Now, I've got to choose one of these. 
Okay, it has to be one. I can't choose both of them because I won't have both SA and SB being used. And I can't choose neither of them uh, and have zero plus zero, or I'm not getting anywhere from S. So it's either one plus zero, or it's zero plus one, depending on which one gets chosen. In both scenarios, it has to be equal to one. So SA plus SB have to be equal to one. Now, what about A? So for A, for vertex A, what we need to do is we need to consider all the possible routes that I'm going to travel into A. So I could get to A using either SA or BA. Okay, one of those will be used and the other won't be. Okay, or potentially neither are used. I might not visit A at all. Okay, so I could have zero plus zero here. And then I look at all the routes coming out of A. So that's AB and AT. And these are subtracted. Now I will show you why that is the case in a moment. So either we don't visit A at all. Or I could um, travel into A along SA, in which case I've chosen SA and not BA. And then I could travel out using AB, for example, but I wouldn't be traveling out using AT. OK, so that's a possibility. Um, or uh, I could travel into A uh, using BA and leave using AB. Well, I mean, that's very unlikely, right, um, that you would do that. Um, if you're finding a shortest path, there'd be no point going da, da, and then getting to T, right? That wouldn't make any sense. But um, it allows for it. And this is one of the things that you should uh, keep an eye out for. Um, for uh, when we go on to doing a maximizing problem. That creates a problem that we need to uh, sort out. So there are all these possibilities. I mean, they're, they're not the only ones, OK? But the key thing is that in order to standardize it and to make Lindo or another linear programming problem make sense of it, it's got to be equal to uh, a number. So all of the variables have to be on the left hand side of the equation when you're doing this. So regardless of what you have, you'll either have um, them all as zeros or one of these will be one and the other zero, in which case one of these will be one and the other zero because if you arrive at A, you've got to leave A. And so consequently this will always be equal to zero. So when you do this, you want all of the roots into the vertex, take away all the roots out of the vertex, equaling zero. So for B, all the roots into B, so SB and AB, take away all the roots out, so BA and BT, and that's got to be equal to zero. And then finally for T, just like it is for the starting vertex, the finish vertex, either I'm going to have AT or I'm going to have BT. I can't have both of them. I can't have neither of them. And so this is either 1 plus 0 or 0 plus 1, and so that will be equal to 1. And so this is my linear programming problem that a program like Lindo would be able to make sense of and be able to solve. Now you'll notice it is quite long-winded, um, even for quite a basic um, network like this. Okay, But that is what has to be run through in order to solve the problem.